Good evening, everybody. This is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight. And my guest tonight is a writer, a director, a media collector, Josh Graves. How's it going, Josh? Hey, it's going good. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming on out of your busy schedule. Yeah, it's um, it's piling up, but um, I'm happy to have the work. Though. Yeah, you've been... Um, You've been a busy uh, writer and director. Um, you're busting out a lot of films. Um, the, the first film let's talk about is uh, The House That Eats Flesh. I'm so looking forward to uh, seeing that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it, it's been a process. You know, I, was, I started the, um, I guess technically I started the writing process about, I'd say three years ago, and it's been a process ever since. Um uh, but one of the main reasons why you, no one has seen it yet is because we actually uh, sold the film uh, to a production um, company out in Arizona, and uh, they'll be releasing it on. Um, uh, uh, they'll be releasing it on VOD, and um, we technically don't have. I guess I guess I would say the rights to sell the physical releases. Uh, just yet i'm um, still trying to work on it but the physical releases you know the, the people who bought them on indiegogo we do have the rights for that so um that still will be happening but uh yeah uh house eats flesh is um it's it's been a process and the film looks great um but yeah i mean i love everything about the house that eats flesh you know a lot of a lot of people worked really hard on that film me and my uh co-director Carlos Berber who also um is a cinematographer on the house that eats flesh and um yeah it looks it looks great it just wrapped up filming house um probably three or four months ago um uh, because of course COVID happened and you know we had to take probably about close to a year off because of that um because of course it had to happen right there in between filming um well, we started in North Carolina. We filmed uh, some because that's where I live is in North Carolina. So we uh, we filmed in North Carolina, and then COVID happened, and then we just wrapped uh, filming the rest in Arizona. And yeah, that was about three months ago. But yeah, it's um it's looking beautiful. It's it's a wild, vicious movie, and I'm super proud of it. I know I can't wait. I've been dying to see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You know, I'm not like heavily involved with post production because um, my co director works for the production company that actually bought the film, and you know he's handling most of the post production. I'll get to see it once it's done, and then I can make. Um, you know notes and stuff and then we can go back and change some things that i may like or uh, maybe don't like and uh take some out put some in um so yeah i haven't even seen the film um but you know i, I we worked on trailers and stuff we'll be releasing a new trailer soon um that's been fully put together with the footage from arizona that we filmed because uh, the first trailer didn't have that the first trailer only had what we filmed in north carolina Got so we'll have a full trailer really, really soon, and the trailer is um, phenomenal. Like it is, like it, it's going to blow you away. Oh, I bet it will. All right, let's talk about some more other films. I mean, um, I'm interested in seeing all these films. I mean, you got me very intrigued. Um, another one you're doing is uh, Late Checkout. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, Late Checkout is. Um, my personal um baby like i love you know that's it's technically like my first film alone because of um you know the house Age flesh was with a co-director and a co-writer um and late checkout is like my full standalone film as a director um i do have a co-writer who um helped write some of the dialogue for the women and also helped put the story together um and her name is Molly Souza. Um, she's fantastic to work with. She's one of my close friends. And, um, you know, we met on the house that eats flesh. She was one of the actresses and, um, I fell in love with her then. And, uh, she's one of my best friends and, um, yeah, she's a great writer and she helped me put together this, uh, this little movie called late checkout. Uh, 
And late checkout was actually called, uh, I think it was Sawzall at first. Okay. Uh, because, um, I don't know, something about that name I liked. But then I got, uh, <laughs> Mil- I think it was Milwaukee Tools um, owns that uh, trademark as Sawzall, I guess, is, a, is like their brand. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And they emailed me. And they are like, hey, you can't use this. And I was like, fair enough. And I was like. I, I mean, I'm glad that this movie had enough traction to uh, for Milwaukee <laughs> to, <laughs> like, email me about that. I was like, okay. So, you know, I probably pondered the name um, a couple of days, and then I was like, uh, let's see. You know, I got to get an Airbnb, so why don't we just you know, try a few names that deals with the Airbnb thing. And I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, late checkout. That sounds good. And then I went with that and then, uh, wrote the script. It's a fun little, uh, slasher film that I'm, you know, very, very, very proud of. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I just, everything about late checkout is, has been a blast. It is, um, it's one of my personal, um, favorites that I've done so far and you know I love everybody all the cast all the crew um, was fantastic um, there was really no issues on set which you know I'm not saying we had any issues on house or whatever but you never know with the production um, going into it if there's going to be any problems um, you know but thankfully there wasn't and everyone had a great time and it was like Ben was you know a family it's like a family event like we're at summer camp but yet everyone is there to work and everyone's there to get the job done and we all got the job done and yeah it was a fantastic ex- experience especially my first time directing you know in the house it was a little you know I had my co-director there to help me through the process because it was my first film so I didn't really, I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't know what I was doing. And the house of flesh, I actually felt like I was in over my head a little bit because it was such a big production and I was this new director and I don't know. It just, I didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, I know I made mistakes on the film. Everybody makes mistakes no matter what it is. And, you know, you learn from it. And I got to apply everything that I learned from house to late checkout and everything went so smooth. It was like butter. And I know that every production is not going to be like that, but I'm so thankful this one was because it's such a, it's such a really cool story. It really, it was a really cool script and we just had a lot of fun making it. And I consider everyone that I worked with on that film friends and, it's hard to say in this industry because you say that you have friends in the industry, but really everybody is just trying to one up each other. It's a, and, and I, and I hate to say that, but that's how I feel sometimes is that everyone's trying to one up each other. And I don't, and I, you shouldn't be like that. It should be like, we should all work together and be proud of each other and, you know, lift up the spirits of each other. Cause directing is a hard job. Um, so if I can make it easier by patting someone on the back and saying, you made a great film, we should do that. And, um, sadly that doesn't happen enough in this industry. So, you know, when I say that everyone that I worked with on late checkout are my friends and I consider them like, like my film family, I mean that because they all patted me on the back saying, Hey, you done a great job. And it's nice to hear that, especially when you're working. I mean, we're working like 12 hours a day and you know, the crew is working more than that. So it's, it's kind of tough to go in day out kind of with no sleep and you're just tired all the time. And it's nice to have someone come up on, on you and be like, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. So I consider everyone that I worked with on late checkout, you know, just the giant family and I would work with every single one of them again. Yeah. You, um, I had one of your, uh, actresses on my uh, show. I don't know if you, uh, listened uh, to it because I tagged you in it. She was in the mutilator too. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I listened to that podcast the other day and, you know, I can't say enough nice things about Anna. Um, so Anna came onto the project 
a little bit later because um, once we actually got to the location and everything, we, we knew that we had a couple of um, had a couple of actors that were having some medical emergencies that we didn't really know that um, if they were going to show up or not. And then you know, I think a couple of days went by, and we realized, okay, you know, we need to see where what was happening and they couldn't make it and you know it's really sad because obviously they couldn't help you know their medical emergencies or anything and you know i really wanted to work with them and so they couldn't make it and then cheney had just uh cheney morrow just um just arrived and we were talking to him about the situation he was like well you know i just worked with this um this girl on mutilator too and let me give her a ring and see if she would want to do it so he called her and uh she said send me the script uh send her the script and the next day she was she was at the location i know she lives in north carolina but she was at the location so fast and you know she came in with this huge smile on her face and I went that she, I think she was acting that same day that she showed up. Okay. And that's tough. That's really tough for an actor. Um, Cause she hasn't had time to really get in touch with the script, but she came in, she went downstairs to do, uh, to get makeup done. And I went downstairs to talk to her and I was like, right, you think you can do this? Um, do you need more time? You know, just anything that I can do to help her. And she she took her time. She read the script while she was uh, in makeup, and then by the time we had the camera equipment and everything uh, set up, she came upstairs right into acting and never missed a beat. And she's a fantastic actress, and I was just blown away by her act at her acting because obviously you don't know what you're getting with a, a new person that is just coming on yeah. to to the scene, and you don't know really what you're getting because you're just hearing word of mouth pretty much it's like i have this girl that worked on mutilator she was great let me give her a call that's all the information i had uh you know i didn't i haven't seen anything she was in so i was like really nervous because you know once you're when you're casting i already had that person in mind for that role and then they couldn't make it so i'm like okay so this could either go bad or it could go good. And thankfully it went great. And, you know, she's a fantastic person. I uh, loved every minute, um, you know, working with her. And I think we have um, uh, a movie lined up uh, this year that we're going to try to do together. Oh, that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that because I love Anna. She was so fun to have on the podcast. I mean, she's just real professional and genuine and nice. I just loved her to death. Yeah, super, super professional. Um, just, uh, she, yeah, she was a she was a treat to have on set because she would always make everyone laugh. You know, she she always had a smiling face, and it was just great. Yeah, let's talk about this uh, another film you're doing. I'm so excited for it. Um, I want to see a trailer, and I can't wait for it to come out. I'm just so pumped up for it. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, Shotgun Hooker. Uh, yes, yeah, Shotgun Hooker is um, one that we are filming right now. Um, I'm actually got, let's see, March. I'm going to film a little bit more of Shotgun. Um, yeah, so Shotgun is my exploitation grindhouse, uh, grindhouse type movie. Um, one, I'm a really big fan of exploitation films. Um, I love the greediness. I love the um, the dark atmosphere of Grindhouse and exploitation films. Um, and I've always wanted to do one. And so this is my chance to do it. Um, yeah, it's that has been really fun. We filmed the trailer a few months ago, and I didn't... You know, I kind of already had the script already done. I'm still writing the script as we're speaking because, you know, some changes and everything was made. But um, we went, filmed the trailer, and I plan on keeping everything from the trailer in the movie because everyone done such a great job. You know, nobody half-assed it or anything like that. It was all, like, legit acting, performances and stuff. I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep everything from the trailer and put it in the movie and if we do an indiegogo we do one if not you know i'll pay for the whole thing because it, it's a it's a special story to me so 
you know, I'm, I want to spend my money making it because as a filmmaker, you can't depend on other people's money. You've got to put some in yourself. So I'm just going to fund the thing myself. And if we do an Indiegogo, it'll probably be only for, you know, like uh, pro- uh, producer perks and, and, and maybe the Blu-rays and DVDs, but that's it. Um, just because Indiegogo is rough, <laughs> I don't like doing Indiegogos. Because um, first of all, asking for money is hard. I don't like doing that. Um, so I'm just going to do it myself. And in, I, I like that because it makes you feel like that you're really in the grindhouse exploitation era back in like the, the 60s and 70s because they didn't have much money to do this. So I'm like, okay, so it's like legit, like I'm doing an exploitation movie with – you know, my own money, and that's how it was done back then, so it's kind of like, it's like doing the same thing over again, like your, um, like the classics done, like, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but (laughs) I get really excited talking about this stuff, Um, but yeah, Shotgun Hooker is a blast, you know, um, the name is, is one thing that, you know, I was like, I got to get this right because the name shotgun hooker, it has to be shotgun hooker. And because it has to be shotgun hooker, I don't care what anyone else says. Um, Cause the exploitation movies are there to draw you in with the title. Yes. Like hobo with a shotgun wouldn't be anything without that name. Yeah. Like, you know, it, I couldn't picture that, that title, any, it, that movie it would not have gotten the attention that, it it would have gotten without that title and i knew that the title had to be something that's going to draw people in so that's why shotgun hooker you know a lot of people are like oh you sure you want to use that name and i was like yeah if you're asking that question that means that i'm going to use that name because it's already attracting attention whether it's um you know good attention or bad attention but yeah the title had to be great and i got uh, my poster with um, my artist to do the poster I'd done late checkouts and he done a fantastic job on that poster. And, um, yeah. So shotgun hooker, you know, stars, um, mouse Cravensworth. Um, she's a fantastic actress. Uh, she worked with me on late checkout and she's another one of my close friends. And, you know, she just, she's killed it so far and I know she'll keep killing it and you'll see her a lot in my films but yeah shotgun hookers is already a blast making um and you know one thing i want to do and get right for shotgun hooker is you know art is not meant to be safe art is i I want to make people cringe i want to make people think and i want to make people see things that they don't normally see because that's what I want in a film. I want people to to look at my films and be like, wow, you know, he could have probably not shown that guy's head getting blown off. <laughs> um, but I want to show these things because art is not meant to be safe. Art is, is meant to have people think. Art is meant to make people uncomfortable. You know, if I'm making someone uncomfortable, if I'm making someone throw up, if I'm making someone leave the studio, leave the theater, that's what I want. I want people to to leave the theater with the impression of my film. I don't want people to be like Josh Graves, Shotgun Hooker. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. I want people to be like Shotgun Hooker. Oh yeah, I've seen that movie. You you've got to see that movie. Or, no, you don't need to watch that movie. That movie is terrible. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be forgotten with my films. Like, I don't want my films to just, you know, people to be like, you know, I haven't heard of that. I want people to be like, oh, I've heard of that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. that that's And that's the exploitation style, though, isn't it? Like, Yeah, it is. Yeah, like, you want to make people uncomfortable with an exploitation movie. Uh, I mean... People don't watch Friday the 13th for the story. People watch Friday the 13th to see Jason kill a bunch of people. I mean, that. I mean, really? I mean, because there's not much of a story there, really, of what campers, um, you know, they, the whole, they go to the Crystal Lake and, you know, there's a bunch of sex and drugs and 
there's not much of a story there. But yet, people come time and time and again to the theaters. They turn on the TV. They always watch Friday the 13th. And really, I mean, when I watch Friday the 13th, I want to see Jason kill a bunch of people. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but (laughs) that's what I'm there for. I'm there for the violence. And I think all of us have that tendency to get violent anyway. And that's what, I guess... That's what movies are, is like, we can't, I mean, some of us, I mean, there are serial killers and stuff out there, but we get to watch this violence on on, on the screen, and we're the normal people that don't want to commit the violence, so we like to watch the violence on screen, fake, hopefully, Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's why I'm uh, I'm intrigued by the, the exploitation genre and the, the grindhouse genre, and that's why I wanted to do Shotgun Hooker because it's a great story, and you know I just love that that style of cinema. Oh, I do too. Um, also, there's another movie you're doing too. I mean, this is what <laughs> I like about you. Um, you're um, one of my favorite, um, you know, indie, you know, horror directors. Um, I like you, and I like a lot of stuff by Tori Jones too. Um, yeah. This other movie that's it seems kind of interesting. I mean, I've been following it and all that is fur. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about fur? Well, a funny thing about fur is we was <laughs> sir, we were um, supposed to film fur um, <laughs> this winter, um, the, the, uh, like in December. But the issue came that there was already another movie coming out that had a similar. Um, premise and it was uh i think it was uh bloody christmas bloody christmas or something okay um it was um a mo uh, it was a movie coming out about a killer robot Santa. yeah Claus. it's yeah it's bloody christmas it was on shutter and it, it was about the government that made these like ai robots look like santa claus and one would malfunction and went around this small christmas town butchering people yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was funny because you know, as I'm writing the script, and then I hear, I no, I didn't hear about it. Um, my special effects person, I was in late checkout, Derek, um, messaged me because we, we I've, I've been talking to him about doing the special effects for her. Yeah. And he messaged me. It's like you know, this kind of sounds like the movie you're making. And I looked at it. And I was like, holy shit, it is. <laughs> like the same, it was almost like the same identical premise, except it was a Santa Claus and not a bear. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I need to hold off on this film and see how this one does. And, <laughs> you know, I watched it. I personally love the director, so I watched it, and I love all of his films. So, of course, I love this one, but then I'm like, ah, maybe I shouldn't do this right now because people are <laughs> going to think that I'm copying it, and that's not the case. So uh, we probably was writing it at the same time, but I'm working on so many other things that – I have to keep coming back to it. So I was like, I'm going to hold off on it. And so Fleur, 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 Fleur is state slated right now for this December, hopefully that yeah. we can start filming that. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's about a, uh, a killer animatronic bear that wears a Santa outfit <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and it goes on a killing spree. Um, and there's, um, you know, the police of that small town have to, um, kind of essentially solve the crime. It, it's, I would, if I have to, if I have to say what it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Wolf of Snow Hollow. Love that movie. With, um, I guess the Christmas, uh, bloody Christmas movie. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, when that happened, I was like, damn. I guess grapevines think alike, <laughs> but yeah, I thought that that was funny, so I had to uh, hold off on that one right now. But it is slated to get, to, um, get working uh, probably around December, but we'll see. I mean, there might be another movie coming out about a killer bear, and then Cocaine Bear is coming out. Oh so yeah, I'm like, and I'm like, <laughs> damn! Like, there's a bear movie coming out, and the killer robot movie is coming out. <laughs> And I'm like, oh man, maybe this isn't the year for fur. I guess not. Um, let's talk about, um, you posted something on your page. Let's talk about, I'm excited. What did you think about the new Scream trailer 
and um, the scene where the um, people were in the um, liquor store in New York, and then you see a ghost face with a shotgun. Uh, it was unbelievably cool. Like, I've never, you know, trailers are there to get you excited, and that is one thing that that trailer did, was getting me excited about Ghostface again. Like, I, I've enjoyed all the Scream movies. I, I've enjoyed, you know, even how hokey some of them have been. Like, yeah. the third one, not everybody likes the third one, but I enjoy the third one because it's there to be fun. Yeah. And, that's what they're. That's what it's meant to be. You know, it's meant to be fun. Cinema is meant to be fun. So, I've enjoyed all the Scream movies. I enjoyed the uh, the newer Scream movie, Scream Five, I believe. I think this is the sixth one. Um, but you know that opening scene where Ghostface comes in with the shotgun, I was like, "Holy shit! This is going to be a fun movie." I could just tell. Um, you know, and uh, I think it's Jen Ortega. Yes, I mean. She has like, I um, mean, she's been killing it with these roles, and you know, I'm super proud of her. Like, she is, she's doing great, and I would, I will watch anything she's in because she's a fantastic actress. So, yeah, I'm super excited for the new Scream movie. I am too, and I'm like, I'm also excited for Hayden Panettiere coming back because you know, yeah. she, she was in four. And um, I always loved her and her roles, too. I loved her when she was a cheerleader in that TV show, Heroes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I hate to say it, but she kind of fell off the face of the earth there for a little bit. And, you know, I'm glad that, you know, she's coming back to the franchise. I wish that um, I wish that Halloween would invite uh, Danielle Harris back to the franchise. Like, I think it's the same thing. Like, she was in Scream 4. Okay, well, you know, her character, we don't know if she's dead or not. Yeah. So, bring her back. That's It's obviously, you know, that that's awesome that they're bringing her back. I wish Halloween would do that with Danielle Harris. You know, it's one of those situations, like, I'm glad that she's back, and I'm excited to see what she does in the role. Um, and it's the same thing with uh, Nev Cam Nev Campbell, like... I know why she's not doing the movie and it's kind of like, I'm glad that she's not in it in a way. Um, the reason I say that is because the, uh, the fifth scream, I, I always thought it would be great. You know how the first one started drew Barrymore's death. Yeah. How cool would it have been? I know it would have hurt a lot of people's feelings, but what if, um, Nev Campbell's character got killed. Sydney got killed, and off in the very beginning, just like they did in the first movie with Drew Barrymore, killed her off in Screen Five. I know it would have been heartbreaking to people, but here's the thing: with movies like this, you have to take chances. You know, you got to be different. It, it's a it's a Stranger Things situation. Like I love Stranger Things, but this the, the last few episodes. Of Stranger Things, I was like, man, that ain't killing off anybody. Like, take the chance, kill off one of your main characters. People will, will remember that. People, it, it's, I don't know, there's something about just not killing off main characters that people don't want to do. They play it too safe. And I don't think that that's always, I don't think that that's always the best thing. Like, in Scream 5, they killed off David Arquette. And I was like, okay now this is a cool movie like you took a chance you, you kill him off but not spoiler alert by the way if you haven't seen it <laughs> shame <laughs> but, on you <laughs> but um i guess it's too late now because i already spoiled it but i don't know i just want these these movies to take chances chances and i'm hoping that scream six takes that chance and maybe kills off the main characters you know make way for the new blood I think so too. So, where can everybody find you on social media so they know what Josh Graves is doing next? Yeah, I mean, you can find me on Facebook. Just type in Josh Graves. I'm sure I'll pop up. If not, you'll find me eventually. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. Just uh, type in Josh Graves Director, and I should pop up there. I'm not on Twitter. I don't do the whole Twitter thing. Um, you can go to my YouTube to see some of my trailers. You can go to Film Trash Productions on YouTube. There should be all my trailers there. I'm also working on the Film Trash uh, Productions website that will be up soon. Um, but yeah, you can find me at those locations. 
All right. Thank you so much for coming on. And everybody have a great evening.